List is a key block in Softer and one of our most versatile and used. This block allows you to display your data visually so that users can edit and filter information as well as even edit it if you so choose to turn on that functionality. You can link the list block to your database, which at the time of this recording are Google Sheets and Airtable, to build any collection of items, such as an employee directory, inventory management for your business, project management tracker, as well as a content calendar, and so much more. The block has a number of different layouts, which we'll go over in this video. Now, for this tutorial, I've chosen the project management template in Softer to show you how to use the list block to display a list of ongoing projects. You can view and use this template for free in our Softer library found on our website. In this client portal use case, you can easily manage projects and tasks between your team members, departments, and offices using Airtable or Google Sheets as your data source that keeps all of the information about the projects, tasks, clients, et cetera. So let's quickly dive into the Softer Studio to see this block in action. For this template, I'm gonna recreate this project list, which showcases information being pulled from the projects tab in my Airtable database. To access this block, we're gonna to go to add block, dynamic, you'll scroll down to list. As you can see here, there's a number of different layouts you can choose from. You may wanna choose a specific layout depending upon what you wanna build. So as you can see, we have a list with horizontal cards that also allows for an upvote feature. We have lists with deletable elements and vertical cards. We have a list with small cards, so the ability to have a small icon photo. We also have the list with the timeline, which is a really unique feature if you want to display your data in a timeline format. List with horizontal cards, list with columnar sliding cards, list with horizontal sliding cards, and vertical cards in tag. We also have vertical cards with a description, vertical cards with a video, vertical cards and a visible button, and vertical cards overlay. And lastly, horizontal cards and a visible button. So lots of different layouts to choose from. I would just think about how you wanna display your data visually and what layout makes the most sense for your project. Now, if we're gonna be creating this list block of projects, let's go with the list with vertical cards and tag. Great, so next up, we wanna select the source where we wanna import our data from. This is done in the data tab shown here in the block settings. So let's connect our data source first, which is Airtable. Next, we're gonna connect our Airtable base, which is project management by Softer. So I just need to search for it. And lastly, we're gonna choose which table we want to link to this list block, which is going to be the projects table as shown here in Airtable. One great thing about Softer is it allows you to link multiple data sources to different pages and blocks within your app. So if your organization uses both Airtable and Google Sheets, you can use both within your Softer app. Even on this page here, I could add a separate block here and link it to a totally different data source, whether it be another base in Airtable or Google Sheets with many more to come. Now back to our original list block, which we're gonna turn into our list of projects. As you remember, we've connected the data source, the Airtable base and the Airtable table. The next option is setting one of your Airtable views as the default view. And the items in this list will be sorted and filtered according to the sorting and filtering configuration in that particular view. Now, for example, in Airtable under the projects tab, I have a separate view that has a filter only showing me the status is in progress. So I can choose that as my default view here, which will essentially do the same thing and only show the projects listed here that are in progress. Now, if you're unfamiliar with Airtable and views in general, I will link a resource below for you to check out and we'll get more into filtering in just a moment. Now, as you can see here, everything is connected, but our data has not appeared yet in this list, which is why it's showing mock data, even though we've successfully connected to the base and the table. This is simply because we haven't linked the item fields to Softer yet. So we easily do that by heading into the features tab in Softer and scrolling down to item fields. This is where you configure how your database is going to be mapped to the list. Now for each list layout, like we quickly reviewed earlier, 
there's a default set of fields for which you can set a corresponding field or the content from your Airtable base or hide that field if you so choose to. So if I'm wanting this list block to resemble this project list here, let's see what item fields I will use, add, and hide. Well, for one, I don't need the photo, so I'm gonna go ahead and hide that. In fact, if we check out the original build and head over to features, you can see that a lot of the default fields are actually hidden, which essentially allows you to build what you want. But for the sake of this tutorial, let's simply hide the image and then fill in the rest. So for the heading three, we're gonna go here and we want this to be the project name, let's say. Great, now as you can see, it's mapping correctly. Next, let's say we want the text to be the project description or what is it called in the Airtable? The description, so we need to search for description. Perfect. We'll keep the divider because it looks nice. And then let's make the tag correspond with the status here. Great, so you can easily see that this is being filtered for our in-progress views, as you can see here. But if we just go to the grid view, it will show all of our projects. So back to the features tab, say the last item field is going to be the project owner. Perfect. Okay, cool. So now we've created a list displaying data from our project table that users can view in real time without ever having to have access to the Airtable database itself. Now let's go over some additional key settings such as sorting, filtering, as well as conditional filters. So first up we have sorting, which you'll find under the data tab in your block settings. Here you have a list of available sorting options based on your Airtable fields or columns. Each field will have an ascending and descending order options. It's important to note that you need to use sorting or default view. If you use default view, sorting will be ignored as the default view takes priority. Next, you can choose the number of items that you want to display on the page. Next, you can choose how many items you want to show per row. Now, as you can see here, we only have the option to show three and that's because we have the tags located on the left-hand side over here. If you choose a layout where the tags are located on the top, then you have the option to choose four per row. If there are more records to display than what you've set on your items per page, you'll see a see more button below. Now you can delete this option if you go to the features tab and simply delete the see more label. However, just know it's only going to show the displayed amount of items to the end user. So back over to data, let's take a look at conditional filters. Conditional filters allow you to filter the list for one or more user or attributes based on the defined conditions. So for example, you can choose to only show certain data to users that are logged in and their email matches the data associated with that email. You could also choose the role in a company, for example. So in this use case, I could technically only show projects that belong to a certain client rather than showing the client all projects associated with all clients, which would not be ideal. Or additionally, let's say like we only wanted to show projects that are assigned to the specific person that logged in. So we could show project owner is logged in users email. This tells software, hey, when a user is logged in, only show them the projects that they've been assigned project owner. Now, conditional filters are part of a totally separate video and tutorial, which we'll link below. Now, let's pop back over to the features tab where we can configure some additional parameters for our list block. First up, you can add title and subtitle to any list block. So I could say here, project list. Here is your project list. Great. Next up are inline filters. Lists can have one or more inline filters where you can define specific fields and their options using which users can filter the list. This is a great way to utilize the single select or multi-select fields in Airtable. So let's say like I want to allow the user to filter this list based off of the status. So what I would do is just go here, I would label it status filter by you want to map to the status the options automatically generate for you you can choose to position the filters however you see fit 
Next up, you can choose the colors. So you can either have a single color or you can choose the colors as defined in the data source, meaning whatever colors you've defined here will automatically show up in softer here. Initially, you can choose for softer to choose the color. You can change it from tags to drop down, and you can also allow multi-select, meaning if I'm a user and I wanna see both to do and in progress, I can choose both. You can add as many additional filters as necessary. All right, next up we have the search bar, which you can toggle on and off, change the placeholder text, then you can choose what users can search by. So in my case, let's say I want users to be able to search by the project name. Then I would maybe change the text here to say, search for project name. Great. Next up is item fields, but we've already utilized that. So if we scroll down, the next item we're unfamiliar with is item on click. Now it's important to note that this is soon going to be moved to a new tab within the settings of your block called action. So be on the lookout for that if you're watching this video after that's been released, but the functionality remains the same. Now, what is item on click? So let's think about our list block. As you can see, if we preview our project list, we've created a nice list block that visually displays some of our project information corresponding with the project table shown here. But what if we wanna display more information upon clicking on an item? We have several options for that, which you'll find under items on click. In this section, you essentially define what happens after clicking on the list item. By default, do nothing is the do nothing option is enabled, but there are a few more options to choose from. So let's see what each of these does. The first is opening an external URL. So essentially we can choose to open up an external URL, which can be mapped to a URL field in your Airtable database. Next, you can open a page. The open a page option allows you to link to other pages within the app. The most common way of using this is linking to a page with a list details block that corresponds with the same database and table. We will go over list details block in another video and we'll also add a link to it in the description below. I highly recommend checking it out if you're just getting started with Softer. Lastly, we have the open modal option. This option works similar to open the page, but instead of navigating to a new page, the user opens the page content inside a model or a pop-up. So here's a quick example of what that'll look like. I've linked the modal, I've linked the action to the project details page. I made the size to medium and let's see what that looks like. Cool, so now all the details about this project are listed in this modal, which again, we'll get to in the list details video. Okay, great. Now you have an overview of how the list block works. If you're curious about how to style the list block, I'm gonna link a video below that goes over how to style and edit the UI of your software app. I also recommend hopping over to the list details video as these two go hand in hand.